Hey, don't get us wrong, we like Kanye as much as the next guy, as long as the next guy isn't Kanye. In today's video, we're going to talk about how Kanye West called Rosa Parks a plant in an online rant against public figures. Come on man, how unhinged do you have to be to go after Rosa Parks of all people? So make sure to stay until the end of the video to learn all about it. First up, Rosa's a plant, apparently. Firstly folks, why don't we just confiscate his phone? Seriously, he keeps getting deplatformed and then finds more and more platforms to just spew hate and embarrass himself. He's a 45-year-old man who's acting like a teenager on Reddit for crying out loud. Anyway, now that he's banned from Twitter, again, he took his wonderful, please hear the sarcasm in our voice, opinions to Clubhouse. For those of you who don't know, Clubhouse is a social media audio sharing app. Anyway, he went onto the app and shared his issues with political and historical figures because, why not? The audio was posted by the neighborhood talk, and we can hear him go after President Obama, Rosa Parks, and many other people. He starts off by insulting Obama, who, by the way, couldn't care less about what Ye had to say. We mean, he's just chilling, enjoying his retirement, sipping wine, like he genuinely couldn't care less. Yet Kanye seems to have an odd obsession with him. Anyway, Ye states everybody knows Obama, not from Chicago. Okay, fine, let's say he's right. Now what? What do we do with this information, or misinformation, or whatever the heck it is? And well, then he went after Martin Luther King, JFK, and of course, Rosa Parks. Want to hear what lies he's spewing this time? All right, fine. Here's what he said. Since 1948, all of these movements, I know Woke's going to be mad at me, but all of these heroes, man, it's only one, and that's Jesus Christ. You're going to find out something about MLK, something about JFK, something about Malcolm, Rosa Parks. We know Rosa Parks was a plant. Next up, the rant continues. The rapper then continued to explain his beliefs. Yes, his beliefs. He apparently thinks that the media exploits the death of people for financial gain. And whose fault is that? According to Ye, what community? is responsible for media exploiting deaths for financial gain. Yep, you guessed it, the Jews. No, seriously folks, we're not joking here whatsoever, we mean it. This is exactly what he said. He further states that the Jews are using these media outlets to create outrage. He even called outrage an economy, and he then elaborated that he means that outrage is the trauma economy. Are you confused yet? Because we are. What is he trying to imply? What's he trying to say? Seriously. He then further states that what death will the media promote this week? It's not like they're going to promote the 14 people getting killed in Chicago every week. Nope, the Jews won't promote that, according to him. The Jews are going to promote the deaths of public figures. He then also says, I'm not going to say whose platform it is. It was the Jews. Like, uh, okay. The man immediately says what he's going to say after saying he's not going to say it. Real, yay. You good, man? Up next, and another one. According to the rap on the 10th of December, this conversation between Kanye and his fans, or whatever resulted in him being removed from the platform, of course, what else did y'all expect? This entire online event was hosted by Kanye and WAC100. Guests paid friggin' 20 bucks each for entrance into the private conversation which was published online later anyway, LOL. The folks over at Clubhouse were, of course, quick to distance themselves from Kanye, kinda like everyone else. Their spokesperson stated that they shut down the conversation because it violated their policies. The spokesperson also stated that there's no place for hate speech, bullying, and abuse. Moving on, it just doesn't stop. So now we know, Kanye's been suspended from the social media site after, well, being Kanye. And we also know the problematic things he said. But of course, it's easy. He said a lot more. He also suggested that Jewish folks are used by the Chinese to control black people, and that the Jews are just the middlemen. Seriously though, how does he keep coming up with things like that? Anyway, while the conversation was shut down pretty quickly, it still was up for almost an hour, so a lot was said. Oh, and he also went on a rampage against the CEO of talent management agency Endeavor, Ari Emanuel. This is the same bloke that he wrote anti-Semitic comments about. So yeah, that's happening. Basically, if you're a little lost, here's what happened. In October, Ye's Insta was suspended after he made anti-Semitic comments about Ari. He also posted a post-lynching photo of civil rights icon, Emmett Till. Emmett was just a 14-year-old boy who was tortured and lynched in 1955 after being accused of offending a white woman. Like, okay, he's crazy. He spews out hate and problematic comments about folks left and right. But how messed in the head do you have to be to have beef with a teenager who was murdered because of his race? It's beyond disgusting, to be honest. And that's not it. He also discussed his latest controversies, and he also talked about Adidas ending its partnership with him. What he says, how he feels, is beyond problematic. And the problem is, he doesn't seem to stop. Seriously, what's it gonna take? 
Now for Another Day, Another Ban. He was also banned from Instagram, again, after sharing a clip of his new song. This song's called Someday We'll All Be Free, and it's his first original release since Donda 2. The song samples the 1973 Donny Hathaway song of the same time, which has been adopted as an anthem for the civil rights movement. He also performed it as a freestyle a cappella rap on, you guessed it, Alex Jones' show. If you don't know who that is, let's just say he's a far-right conspiracy theorist. That's us being nice, just by the way. Oh, and on that show, he denied the existence of the Holocaust. Yeah, for real. We're not kidding right now. He even denied that Hitler killed 6 million Jews. Earlier, he was banned from Twitter, again, for tweeting an image of a swastika inside a Star of David. Yeah, it got so bad that even Elon Musk, of all people, thought that it was wrong. And in a true racist fashion, West continues to deny that his comments are racist. He doesn't even believe in the term anti-Semitism because he feels that it's not factual. How long before he runs out of platforms to spew hate on? Let us know in the comments below. What's more, he's shown us exactly who he is, and we keep listening. This year has been kinda crazy, and then Kanye happened, and somehow things got even crazier. But here's the thing, everything he's done, everything he said, by now his career should have ended. This is all pretty much career suicide. But the truth is, he was one of the top 5 most streamed artists on Spotify in 2022. He even had 30 million followers on Twitter before he got suspended. And he knows as well as us that the media outlets have also been tracking his every move. So the fact is, people aren't just listening, no, but they're watching too. So while it seems like he's pretty much destroying his own career and his own reputation, the truth is, Ye isn't about to disappear. Since he wore that White Lives Matter shirt in Paris, he's had almost 100 million streams on Spotify. Oh, and that's not all. His actions even affect politics in the United States. For example, prominent Jewish conservatives are turning their backs on Donald Trump after the ex-president dined with Ye and Nick Fuentes. Because here's the thing about Fuentes, he's a white supremacist, a Holocaust denier, and most surprisingly, he's an advisor on Ye's 2024 presidential campaign. Seriously, how problematic do you have to be to make Donald Trump of all people look bad? Ye went from being one of the most prominent artists of the 21st century to the biggest bigot there is. How did all of this even happen? And how are we still okay with everything that he's doing? Because the numbers don't lie. Let's see where it all went wrong and why we didn't notice this before. Finishing up, he was problematic before too, just not as much. His behavior before 2016 was quite obnoxious too, to be honest. But he always had two aces up his sleeve. Firstly, he had self-awareness. He would wittily acknowledge that he is that way, and well, everything would be okay. He would even go as far as to roast his own ego. Basically, no matter what, it's like he understood what his flaws were. And well, folks forgave him for that. And then, of course, the second trick, that despite all of this, none of us can deny his talent. Do y'all remember his song, Power? Why was it so good? Why was it so addictive? And did y'all notice how he used human vocals as music throughout the song? It really was a great song, and it shows that when it comes to producing music, Ye really is a genius. No one can do it better than him, hit after hit. And maybe that's why even now, folks are listening to him, albeit in secret, probably. So the turning point for all of this came all the way back in 2016, when Ye was sent to the hospital for exhaustion. After that, he made an appearance at the Trump Tower, aligning himself with the super racist presidential candidate. It literally came as a massive shock to all of us. But everything he's done now, everything that he said now, that seems just so normal. Since then, it's been a roller coaster. Ye was found to be bipolar, which he felt was the fault of a Jewish doctor. Normally, when something like this happens, we see the celebrity issue an apology and then pretend that everything's back to normal. In Ye's case, that's not happening. No. That's a wrap for this video. What do you folks think, though? Do you guys think Kanye will finally apologize and start acting normal, or will he keep digging himself into a deeper hole? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.